If you had to start garage workshop from nothing, which would be the first tool you would get? Well, we are somewhat in that situation. We have an empty garage, a CNC table with an improvised but effective dust collection, a small pile of plywood and a vision of having a workshop. Hi, I'm Davis and currently we are sitting in an empty garage. However, we have plans to make all the necessary tools that every workshop requires and make some fun and useful items along the way. It won't be an easy task and we will probably make plenty of mistakes and learn valuable lessons from every project. If you would like to join us on this journey, make sure you subscribe. As you probably know, most CNC projects go through five main phases. Cutting the components, trimming the edges, assembling, preparing for the finish, and applying the finish. Since we have CNC and can make components for most projects, it would be great to have a dedicated space for removing the support tags and trimming the edges. For those tasks, a router table can come in handy. A while ago, I made the router table design with two options. One using only CNC cut joints and fasteners like screws, nuts and butterfly nuts. The other one uses T-track profiles and T-slot bolts and nuts. Both options are basically the same when comparing what can one accomplish on the router table. Back then I had made the router table with the CNC cut joints only. Since some of the features could have used improvements, the router table was never presented publicly. The first thing we have to update for this table is adding T-slot grooves for the attachments. They will make working on the router table more enjoyable. The second minor task is replacing this wall component. As you can see, the grooves here are a little bit too deep. There is too much space for the sliding driver floors, therefore they don't stay in their tracks, and that is annoying. The last thing we should update are these drawer panels. As you can see, the Ariba Box logo holes aren't big enough to function as drawer handles. Oh, it would be good to simplify the miter gouge as well. This one has way too many moving parts. The tasks are specified, so let's get to it. Redoing the wall component is quite easy. All we have to do is make the grooves for the drawers and cut the outline. Thanks to the CNC joinery, replacing the old wall component is fast and simple. Cutting and replacing the front panels for the drawers is quite straightforward as well. Alright, now we have to replace the tabletop. It will be more challenging since it requires cutting from both sides. The biggest challenge is to get the positioning right when flipping the component to the other side. There is a technique that would ensure flawless results, however, it may require to cut holes in the components. The idea behind this approach is quite simple. Using the CNC you can cut holes in components or the excess material and use the exact coordinates to make holes in your spoil board. When turning the piece to the other side, you can use the holes as reference points for positioning. But since I have a sheet of plywood that is barely big enough for this component, I will use a different approach. I cut a groove in my spoil board, which I will use for aligning the component to the CNC table. The corner here is at coordinates X 150mm and Y at 75mm from the home position. When preparing the G-code, I will use the same coordinates to position the tabletop. First I cut a hole for the router panel to go inside. To secure the component in place I add a couple of screws in the center offcut. That will ensure the workpiece stays in place while cutting the contour line. But before that we have to cut the joint pockets.
I'm done with the bottom of the tabletop and can flip it to the other side. When doing so, I noticed that the final pass of the contour line left its mark on the spoil board. That will help me position the workpiece even more accurately. After carefully aligning the workpiece to the groove, I use plywood offcuts to secure it to the table. And it seems it worked great. As a first cut to the other side, I cut the pockets for the router insert. important to check if the router insert is at the same level as the rest of the table. This way we can ensure that we will get the best experience when we will work on the finished router table. And it seems like we got it on the first try. Now we have to make the T-slot grooves. Before using the T-slot bit I made a couple of passes with 6mm bit. The idea is to remove the excess material so the T-slot bit has less resistance during its passes. The tabletop is done and it's time to cut the T-slot groove in the fence as well. First I have to remove the necessary components from the fence system. To position the fence I will use the same groove that I made earlier. Also I'm doing the passes the same way as before. The first one with 6mm bit to remove the excess material and final pass with a T-slot bit. After reassembling the components, the fence is done. And now we have to replace this guiding gouge. I made a new design and now the miter gouge has fewer moving parts and looks better. To use the material efficiently, I will use the wall component that we replaced earlier as material for this component. Before cutting the contour lines of the miter gouge, I'm engraving the degree markers. To make life easier, I made knobs for the screws. That will simplify adding the attachments. I just realized that all of these attachments that we have for this table need 6mm screws to be attached. The problem is the T-slot profiles that we made are for 8mm screws. To fix that, I will use our newly updated router table to widen the attachment grooves. With that concludes our router table project. This morning we walked into an empty garage, but now we have the first tool ready for use. But we still have a long way to go to make this into a nice woodworking workshop. Leave a like and also subscribe if you would like to see our next episodes. Stay creative and I'll see you next time.